If you're wondering if your Husqvarna Viking Onyx 25 is a machine that can free motion quilt, I'm happy to say yes. And we're gonna walk through the steps to turn it over to a machine that not only sews, but also free motion quilts. Now I am a big advocate of free motion quilting. I do all my own free motion quilting. I can do it on any sewing machine that you put in front of me, but it did take a little practice. So when I do talk about free motion quilting, it's not something that happens overnight. You kind of just need to jump in, do a quilt, practice, do another quilt. But actually what I did was I took online courses from Craftsy and all their wonderful teachers that are free motion quilting experts. So I wouldn't say I'm an expert enough to have my own course. I take courses myself from people that know more information than I, but I do have to put in the practice. So I know everybody always says practice, practice, but I will put links to some of my favorite craftsy classes in the description of this YouTube video. So you can click and check them out. You can buy classes from Craftsy individually, or you could do their like monthly subscription, which allows you to access all the courses, which is probably the easiest way these days. One of the things that you do need to think about is your needle choice. So top stitch needles are what all your instructors are gonna tell you to use. It has a bigger eye. It also has a deeper groove. It's a sharper point. So as you are working through fabric that is with batting and multiple multiple layers and seam allowances, it will make a nice crisp stitch. The other thing that we're gonna talk about is how to adjust your tension, because usually you need to do that with this with free motion quilting in general, not just this machine. But we are gonna start with a, a straight stitch. It doesn't matter what the stitch length is on because we are going to lower the feed dogs on this machine, but do make sure your needle's in the center position. Now the free motion quilting foot that you need to purchase is a low shank quilting foot. And because of where it attaches, we are going to need to take your screwdriver and undo the screw right here on the side. Since I spoke about dropping the feed dogs, let's go ahead and do that now. Of course, we've just been doing all the videos from buttonholes to mending to how to do uh, stitches with a twin needle. We've done some decorative stitches and I have had some fun with variegated thread as well. So if you want to just have some fun and stitch out all your stitches, Boring solid colors are great, but you know, switch it up a little bit and have some fun. When I was sewing buttons on, it actually ended up one side has pink and one side has purple. It's kind of a little happy accident there. So feed ducks, let's talk about feed ducks. Slide the accessory box off the machine, reach behind the machine. Yes, we've done a video on dropping your feed dogs. This is one of the places you're gonna use it. Behind here is a lever. So if you peek behind, the lever is gonna go to the right. As a reminder, once those teeth go down and you come back at the end of your project, which might be in a while, so you might leave yourself a sticky note to remind yourself to bring those feed dogs back back up because if you just forget and then like three weeks later you come back to your machine to sew, you're going to notice that your fabric doesn't move through and your needle's just going up and down. As you bring this lever back to the left, nothing happens. You actually have to need to take a stitch. You can do it by hand. Turn that hand wheel or just step on your foot control with a little scrap of fabric underneath and the feed dogs will magically rise out of the machine. So just note that they don't come up when you slide it back uh, just until you take a stitch. Okay, feed dogs are pushed that way. Now they're back down, so they'll stay down. This little extra workspace is gonna be perfect. This is gonna help you move your fabric around. If you do have your machine in a cabinet or even one of those larger acrylic tables that you can purchase to go around it, the more work surface you have, the better. Okay, I'm gonna just slide this underneath. We're gonna take our screwdriver and loosen the screw on the side. And let me talk about this little ankle that we're actually removing. Now I'm noticing this is a brand new machine. The screw is a little bit tighter than I'm noticing. So I'm gonna just go ahead, loosen it all the way. And I'm a fan of storing this white ankle with a foot attached to it. Because if you just store this away in your white accessory box, sometimes you might forget what it looks like. And then also like, forget it's there. So I'm a fan of leaving a foot attached. Now it looks like something. 
and you'll be like, oh yeah, there's the ankle that I need to put back on once I switch back to sewing. So since this foot is more of a hopping foot, we're gonna attach the screw right through this kind of claw area. And then it, this part needs to sit above the needle screw. So just make sure that that is just above it and then everything will activate at that point. So just go ahead and get your screw started and then use your screwdriver to get it all the way attached nice and tight. The last thing I need to remind you is that we do have to lower this foot on to the fabric. So you can't just sew with that up, you actually need to engage it. What it's doing is engaging the tension disc on the thread and that will make a difference. You are often reminded to bring your bobbin thread up. On this machine, you're gonna hold the thread coming out of your needle with your left hand. Take one full stitch and then bring your fabric to the side. My bobbin thread is pink, so I can just pull that all the way up. I'm also allowing my thread to come down through the middle of my free motion quilting foot. Then make sure that foot is down. I know sometimes it's hard to tell, is it up or is it down? But as you step on your foot control, here's kind of the mechanics of free motion quilting. We want to find a happy speed. So remember driver's ed when they told us that we need to step on the foot control and for highway speed, you get up to speed and then you kind of lock your ankle. So on this foot control, you might even find yourself getting up to speed and then just holding it there. So don't try to go faster or slower as you're working. Get to a comfortable speed that as we, you'll see soon, my hands are going to start to move and we're looking for a nice even stitch length. If you move it too fast, you're gonna get long stitches. If you move it too slow, you're gonna get lots of little ones. Or if you sew too fast, you, you might not be able to keep up. So there's that's the part of practicing that takes people a little bit. And don't worry about where you're actually going. That part just comes with also some practice. So as I take a few stitches, I'm finding a speed that is happy for my hands to start moving around. So here is how it looks. If I go too fast, see those little tiny stitches? It doesn't look so great. If I go too slow and then move it too fast, now I get ginormous stitches. So that's that happy middle of what you're comfortable with to get a nice stitch length that's nice and even. And once you have that, that's when you can start to work on like shapes or other things that you're going to create with your stitches. So for example, if one of the stitches I like to do are kind of these like feathers that aren't feathers, but they kind of have a fun look when you start to put them all together. Okay, I have done a lot of these. So just because they look okay here, doesn't mean <laughs> that I can just do that every day, but it is something that the more you practice, the easier something like that gets. And you can find yourself with this machine doing anything that any of the big machines can do, but you do need to do a little practice. Play around with different threads. And speaking of threads, let's peek on the underneath side. Okay, so here's what we're talking about. I did mention at the beginning that we would probably need to adjust our tension just a little bit. And this is what we're gonna see on the back if it's not perfect. I kind of call these eyelashes. Kind of does look like eyelashes <laughs> specifically today because of the coloring. Um, so what we need to do, since the top thread is getting pulled to the back, we need to take our top tension, that's this one, so normal it's four. So if we wanna tighten it up, we need to pull it a little tighter, we're going to a higher number. Now if you forget, that means that you went to the wrong direction, it's just gonna get worse, no problem. Put it back to normal and go the other direction. So let's go ahead and turn it up two full numbers. I'm gonna do a little bit more stitching and then we'll see what it looks like. I'm just gonna come over here so we can just kind of see in a new area how it looks. So better, but not all the way there. Oh yeah, you can totally see all my eyelashes. We're gonna tighten it up even more. And I do have two different threads in the machine. So I have a different way to thread in my bobbin than I do in my needle. So of course I'm gonna to need to alter tension. That's nothing wrong with the machine at all. Ooh, we're getting better. Okay, um, I'm gonna just go a little bit further.
And this is what I do. I need to do this anyway when I kind of start to um, do some practicing. It's kind of warm up. Ooh, look at that. So you just want it so it practically looks the same on the front as it does on the back. Don't worry about what the numbers are. Right now I'm closer to eight, a uh, good high seven and a half. That that once the stitches are balanced, that's where it needs to be. Don't be afraid to be that high or on another project, a lower number. Just note that when you're done, you can bring that back to kind of where we started. But free motion quilting, it's just, it's an expression of like drawing. So if you are like me and don't draw on a regular basis, okay, I am not a drawer, but I can practice, I can doodle, and I can also trace. So tracing is another thing. Remember tracing paper with over a pattern you're trying to learn? You trace it over and over and your hand and mind will start to realize the shape that you're trying to do and then you can translate it to your fabric. But you know, two minutes of doodling doesn't equal perfection. I'm talking about like 30 minutes of doodling will get you to where you want to be. So just remember this is a journey and this machine will do it, but just give yourself some grace that it doesn't happen just at the beginning if you're a brand new free motion quilter. Just know that this machine can do it. When you're done, you're going to take off that presser foot that we've attached. Remember, bring those feed dogs up and any like drastic changes, especially like that tension that we've changed, let's just put that all the way back to normal so we aren't in a weird ballpark when we go to start doing some straight stitches later. I hope you'll give your free motion quilting skills some test and realize this machine is a beautiful free motion quilting machine. I hope you'll check out all of our videos. You can start from the beginning and binge watch them. There's a link in the description below that you can click on and start from the beginning.